Echinocephalus johnsoni is a really cool specimen. It's the most complete ankylosaurid dinosaur recorded from Utah to date. Echinocephalus is completely new, which means it's a species that has never been described in the scientific literature before, and it hasn't been found anywhere else. We have a large portion of the skeleton, including nearly all of the skull, a lot of the vertebral column and the limbs and ribs, and quite a bit of armor as well. It's pretty rare to find so much of the skeleton in one place. This specimen was discovered at a site found by BLM paleontologist uh, Scott Richardson. The Caparos Formation is really special, not only because of the abundance of fossils we find and the diversity of different species, but almost every species of dinosaur we find there is something new that hasn't been found anywhere else on Earth. Echinocephalus is part of a, a group of dinosaurs called ankylosaurs, and that's the group that includes all these sort of tank-like armored dinosaurs. So I'm holding here uh, the tail club of Echinocephalus, and you can see these fused vertebrae here, and then these big knobs that come off either side are the big pieces of armor that are fused on to form the tail club. What makes Echinocephalus so unique is, well, first and foremost, its skull. If you look at its, at its skull, you'll see that it's really heavily ornamented. It is completely different from any other ankylosaurids that we have actually seen. So I've got here the skull of Echinocephalus, and you can see there's the eye would be right in this hole. The nostrils are up front with this beak for eating plants. And then hopefully you can see all these pointy knobs that are the bony armor that's particularly spiky on this species. So we named this new ankylosaurid Echinocephalus johnsoni. And echina is the Greek word for thorny or spiky, and that refers to all the spiky ornamentation on its head. Cephalus is the Greek word for head, and then the epithet johnsoni refers Randy Johnson, who's a volunteer in the fossil preparation lab at the Natural History Museum in Utah. As much time as it takes to excavate a specimen, the work is really just beginning because when we excavate bones and skeletons in the field, we leave a lot of rock around it to support it and uh, wrap them in these plaster jackets. And it's not until we get back to the lab at the museum where we actually get a chance to fully expose the bones and see what they look like. And that process of exposing the bones takes hundreds to thousands of hours depending on the specimen and with a skeleton that's as complete as this there's you know, thousands of hours in that prep work before we're able to actually study the fossil. The skull was sort of face planted in the dirt so it was literally its snout was facing down and so you could only see the back of the skull so Randy prepared it and and he did such an incredible job. Only one single specimen of Echinocephalus has been found in the Kaparowitz Formation. And of course, we hope for, for many more to come so we can actually understand the anatomy of this animal. Our work's not done when we find a new species uh, because we want to know about the lives of these animals. How did they change as they grew up? How did they behave? What did they eat? And to answer those questions requires ideally multiple specimens. So we hope to go back out to southern Utah and find more specimens of the Canisethalus.